So what we'd like to do right now is kind of switch over to a couple of examples that we've developed at predictive engineering uh, to discuss how this is actually used in STAR. How do you put this together? And first one is a flow mixing problem. It's from an old HVAC job that we had some years ago. Yeah. And the way this is set up. Hey, Clay, I'll, I'll jump yeah. in because that's mine. <laughs> okay. My servant is yours. So this is the one I did where I said the class, like, well, we're on 10 revs, and, you know, 10 changes, and check each one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I never got anything really good with it. Um, so it was it was just too too good an example to bring out. So I said, okay, Clay, you got to do this. Show me show me how to set it up. And what they're doing, it sits on top of a hospital roof. It's it's the air mixer of return air and uh, new air mixing in before it goes into the heat exchanger racks. And you really want to avoid you want to get thorough mixings. You want to avoid having streams of cold air coming from the outside or and streams of return air. And if these streams do build up, if you don't get mixing. They stay that way, and they're actually going to the ventilator, and you get hot and cold spots inside the system. So the mixing, usually you have to have very large spaces, and you have these blades that are set up to turn it. So this was a, an advanced mixing design where you're trying to you're shooting in the, the, the external air down through the baffles. Those are through the columns, and the return air from the, from the hospital are just coming in through the wide spot. And you got different temperatures and different flow velocities. And so the slots, go ahead, Clay. This is where you can jump in. You set up the slots with different flow resistances on it. Yeah, the slots, are, you've got the six columns down here. We've got about five uh, baffles. They're modeled as porous baffles with different resistances. So the question is, you know, what are the appropriate settings for those flow resistances? Yep. And the second. And the second example is a wind turbine. Um, this was something, you know, I was researching through literature, trying to put together something real quick that we could run an optimization study on, and I came up with this design that was real interesting. This is for harvesting wind energy, and basically they're putting these cowlings around the turbine blades themselves. Um, so the idea is you're kind of trying to create some negative pressure here to increase the flow velocity through that turbine blade. If in wind energy, the amount of power you can extract from the airflow is actually going to be cubed with the air velocity. So anything you can do to increase that air velocity through here is going to allow you to more efficiently extract power from the air. So this is somewhat a traditional airfoil design. And a good question is, you know, what is the optimal shape? What's the best shape that you can come up with that's going to maximize the velocity through here? And also, you know, decrease the amount of uh, total drag force that you would have on this because you've got this thing sitting maybe 10, 20 meters up in the air. So you'd like to reduce the amount of drag on that too. So let's jump over and start for the first uh, problem that we had mentioned on the flow mixing. Um, as you can see here, we have the geometry. Um, the original geometry that we showed before had six channels. Pretty much everything is symmetric to one another, especially once you get into the center channel. So we've cut this down to take advantage of symmetry. And we can see here if I explode out the boundaries, uh, the way the model's set up. We've got those two sides right here that are planes of symmetry. We've got the return air inlet. This is return air from HVAC system at 24 degrees C. And then we got cold exterior outlet air at minus 11 degrees C. It does mentioned before, we've identified five baffles that go down the length of this column. And each of these baffles has a resistance associated with them. That's shown right here. So we've parameterized the, this, these resistances. And you know, there's many resources out there. Um, we've used idle check and freed in the past that give you hand calculations for associating resistances with certain densities of a screen mesh or a pattern of holes. 
So, you know, there's engineering justification for kind of going back to a simplified model such as this. And we can open up here some initial design results. You started off with a value of five for each of these baffle resistances and ran the model to a converged solution. You see kind of the general trend what we have right here. We've got the cold air that's coming in. It's actually getting pushed down to the bottom. Most of the warm air is getting channeled in the middle. Some of it's getting pushed up. And overall, we don't really have very good flow mixing. If we look at a plane about three meters downstream from those channels, you know, we've got about three, close to a three degree C uh, delta T throughout that plane. Um, so overall, we'd like to, you know, lower that gradient if possible. And what we're using is a statement right here. Is we're looking at the standard deviation of temperature in that plane. So one thing that you can do that George may have done before when he was doing this project is you could start running this project. We could go to these baffles right here and start adjusting the numbers of them and yep. see what the changes would be. That's what I did, pretty much. Yeah. And you can imagine engineer doing this is going to spend hours and days just putting on different numbers and you yeah. well, it was driving right. it in the wrong direction right here. So I would say overall, this is not a very good method to pursue. No, it was my beer project because it, <laughs> it just, you just pick some numbers. I watch it, drink beer, watch it go by, give up. Yeah. Uh, so. What we did was we put it into the design manager in Star CCM Plus to see what kind of solution that we could get. And this is the design manager here where we've declared optimization study for this. We have our input parameters here. It's those five baffles and we can set the range for each of those. And then we have the responses that we're worried about. So this is the standard deviation of temperature in that plane. And I also put up the back pressure on here because we probably want to minimize the back pressure on the HVAC unit. Good. And this is a single weight study. So both of these points are being added up into a single cost function that the uh, optimizer is trying to find the lowest value to. And we ran this through 160 design cases. And you can see over here, this is this square right here is where we started off on the initial design. And every time it finds, oh, better design, it makes that its holding point and continues searching around this solution space. And I think we get down to over here about 100, design 145. And I can open up the temperature distribution that plane about three meters down from where we started. And where we started close to three degrees C, delta T, we're now down below uh, close to half a degree C. Delta T right here. So there's been a great improvement of where we started versus where we are right now. And it took me oh, a few minutes to set up this optimization study and you hit run and go off and do something else with your time. Yeah, so let's I, mean, talk about a, I want to say, okay, yes, yeah, simple model and people can nod their heads and say, yeah, you know, our models are huge and gigantic, take a long time. But that's one of the things is star goes, you can send it off to the cloud if you want to. Uh, and the licensing model is not a big deal. And you can run it that or with it. With it um, we have a workstation with 38 cores locally. And it, it chews, I mean, it goes well. I mean, once you get something set up, you can run much, much larger model. Um, through it, and it may take a day, overnight, two days. But then again, if it's truly, truly gigantic, and once you have it worked out, you can send it to the cloud. So, yeah, technically, back. So the previous model, we were looking at a design parameter within the model. So what happens if you have to change the shape and remesh the shape? So here's our airfoil right here where we're meshed. You know, we've got some refined cells down at the front where we're hitting and trying to refine a wake zone behind it. Um, here in the design parameters, I've got six parameters listed. If I go to the built-in 3D CAD tool, 
as seen here. Is this 2D or 3D? This is uh, axisymmetric. Ah, uh, axisymmetric. So, oh, yeah, it would be. So you re revolve the 3D and then get a 2D plane out of it. Good for you. So as you can uh, see here. Oh, uh, um, I want to mention too. It's. I mean, I mean, this is this is purist, but StarSense is part of the course Siemens PLM software, Digital Twin. You know that you can hook it up to NX too, and. Uh, well, we'll do that. We'll do it the next project. But that's one of the that's one of the gigs. Yeah. Of course, you hook it up to NX, and it will feed parameters back and forth, you know. And you can change your mm -hmm. geometry and your huge model, and bring it back into Star. And yeah. uh, I want to say one of the enabling technologies that makes it next generation is like Star will actually mesh crap. Um, before they would say oh, you can do a demo and. Anytime you make a geometric change, it would blow up your mesh. And it's like, you know, fine. It's just, it's just a cartoon, demo cartoon. But what's different is that the meshing technology in Stars, but is really standout. It's one of the, it's, it's, it's enabling technologies. Is the wrapper? Clay talked about it. So yeah, that has this cool wrapper that thinks. Well, a lot of people they talk about wrappers, but in CFD you really have to have it because you. Very, very tiny features don't really affect anything on your mesh usually. And, and if you can just blend those together, um, you cover it with a skin, it's gonna be a lot better numerically and you're gonna better solution. It also enables you to take very large assemblies and do these parametric studies, these optimization studies, because the wrapper is integrated into it, into the tree. And so when you bring it in, we make the parameter NX, it brings back the geometry in and it'll, it'll automatically reapply the wrapper, send it through the tree and boom, into the optimization. So it's much more than a sketch. This is just, this is one option. Okay, back to you. Yeah, so in the sketch here, I was trying to you know, guesstimate that airfoil design from the paper, uh, truthfully, and putting this model together, I probably spent more time trying to put that sketch together than actually set up and run the optimization study itself. Uh, but we've identified about six different geometric features that we could use to guide the, the, the sketch. Um, everything's back to geometric constraints. And we've called those out as the parameters here. And again, you know, we've got an initial solution that we've run. And again, we could pick this solution up and start running it again. Or we could, I mean, make some changes here to these uh, parameters. So maybe we increase that uh, diameter, maybe we increase or decrease the thickness. And the first step we're gonna have to do is remesh the changes that we made. Quickly go through, remesh, re and then hit run. And go back and see the results. See whether or not we're gonna get something that's better or worse than what we had before. And again, we're looking at what's the maximum velocity that goes through the center of that turbine down here, velocity mid, and we wanna know the overall drag force. And again, as you can imagine, it would probably take many hours for an engineer to sit around here and just remesh, rerun, remesh, rerun to find an optimal shape. Wow. That is so again, cool. we, <laughs> sorry. So again, this is the first time I've sorry, Clay. I, I, this is the first time I've seen it. <laughs> it is really yeah. cool. Go ahead. So again, we set up a design study shown right here. And this time, before we were doing a single point study, this is called a multi-objective study because we wanted to both look at increasing the velocity through the middle and decreasing the overall drag force on that entire cowling. And what you end up, and again, you've got your input parameters, the six dimensions that I had mentioned before and you define your responses, those two points. You can define as many responses as you want. And we, create, we ran through, I think, 120 different design iterations. And on the input parameters, you set like, this is the baseline parameter, this is a range I want you to look at, because that original sketch was a lot of geometric constraints. There are points that would come up with a nonsensible geometry. Uh, when you hit one of those points in here, it just, throws it out, skips over it, and it goes on to the next one. It doesn't hang up the software. So it 
re really reviews the space automatically for you. And you can see down here, we started off on this baseline design right here, and this was just me eyeballing it. And we had a five meter per second wind inlet, so this is about a 30% increase in the wind velocity. So you can see there's great gains in just a design point right here that hits you know, a higher velocity and also reduces the drag force. If we could handle the same drag force we started off with, we got an even better design up here. And again, we can open up any of these designs and look at what the shape is that it was analyzing and also go back and extract the parameters for that design. That's uh, kind of where we are with those two demonstrations. Wow. I got to tell you, wind term is really cool. Thank you. That was huh. interesting. We may have to do something with that someday. Yeah. Did you did you find anybody doing optimization like like that on this, or did they just present, you know, this concept? The first paper I found there was, you know, a little bit of an optimization study, but it looked like a grad student just picking around four or five variable cases to figure out what's the best. Um, huh. This paper here that I referenced this design from, um, it's more or less just a re review of the diffuser augmented wind turbine technologies. Huh. We have to send this to, we have a, we have a colleague at the National Renewal, Renewable Energy Laboratory in Golden. Oh, okay. That uh, they use STAR. He came out of Portland oh, okay. State, and then. Uh, oh, good. Yeah, and then he moved on to got a real got a <laughs> got a more intense job at NREL. So interesting. Okay, that's it, isn't it? We don't even have a slide like. Yep. That's up. it. <laughs> good. I like that. Well, guys. We try to keep this thing short. You know, we hit our target for, for what, 45 minutes? Perfect. So, so I said earlier, hey, if you got questions, ping in, talk to Jeremy. He'll reach out, find the right person to hook, to hook you up with. And uh, thanks for your attention very much. That's Thank it. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.